Hey, what's up, YouTube landers? And welcome to another show. And we're going to talk about metals and alloys. But before we do that, I would like to thank all you subscribers out there. We've got about over 100 subscribers, and it's great that some of you are learning from this. All right, let's move on to metals and alloys. Well, we probably already know some of the general properties of metals, like it's being dense, it's hard, uh, malleable, high melting points, and all that stuff. But what makes it like that? Well, let's get a closer look at the uh, lattice structure of metals. And here we go. Look at here. We have rows of positive ions stacked up like that. And on those positive ions at the valence shell, you have what we call delocalized electrons, free moving electrons. Now, what does that mean? Right, the positive ions here are in a fixed position. That means they ain't gonna be moving unless something impactful happens, all right? Nothing's gonna happen, it's fixed. And what you get here is delocalized electrons that can move around. So, uh, for example, here I've drawn an example of a group one uh, metal, perhaps, all right? And what you have is one delocalized electron for every positive ion. But what's so interesting about this is because it's delocalized, meaning it's not localized, that means it's not fixed, these electrons can move about. So it can move about anywhere along this lattice. So that's what we get. Fixed positive ions in a regular lattice arrangement, free moving electrons, and we got layers and layers of positive ions that can slide past each other. It's kind of like bags on a roller wheel at the uh, baggage claim uh, at the airport, kind of like that, can slide past each other. And between the uh, positive ions and the delocalized electrons, there are strong electrostatic forces that hold them, that bind the whole thing pack, uh, compactly together, packed up, closely packed together. But these closely packed metallic uh, forces, which are called metallic bonds, are not rigid. They're, yeah, they're not rigid. That means they can move about slowly. Why? Because of the delocalized electrons. Right. So, these structure here, this structure here, can help explain a whole slew of the properties of metals. It can explain a whole slew of why metals are densely packed, for example, because the positive ions are compactly, uh, are compact, and they're pressed up against each other, like a pack of sardines. Right. Metals have high melting points. And why is that? Well, because of this many, 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 many strong electrostatic force, right? Metallic bonding is pretty strong. And if each um, positive ion has, on average, two delocalized electrons, let's say calcium metal or aluminum, or aluminum, for example, then what you're going to get is stronger metallic bonding, all right? Right here, we only have one, but I could draw more in there. Yeah, let me do that. So I can draw more electrons in there, and if you notice, when I'm filling in the electrons, I'm not drawing it in in any particular order. It's just the way I randomly put it in. So on average, oops, I have two delocalized electrons for every positive ions, and that means stronger electrostatic force. All right, the delocalized electrons can help explain why metals are good conductors of electricity, whether it's a solid or whether it's molten. Molten meaning liquefied. Okay, so here 
the electrons are free to move, right? Free to move. But what if I put electrical energy in, onto the metal bar? Let's say this is a metal bar, and I boom, put a wire in it, and I turn this power on, and the electrons from the wire starts going this way. And what it's going to do is it's going to start pushing all the delocalized electrons to the other end because it's, it's free moving, right? So the other delocalized electrons are going to move to the other end and it jumps onto the wire and so the electricity is flowing because of that. Electrons are flowing because of that, all right? And that helps explain why it's a good conductor. In a molten state, these positive ions are um, less rigid, we should say, it's less, in, less of a, in a fixed position. They're still allowed to flow and all that stuff, but they are not separated. These positive ions are not separated. They're still close, closely packed, but they can slide past each other. All right, and the delocalized electrons can still move around those positive ions and jump around and all everywhere. All right, okay. Why are they also good heat conductors? Well, same concept as the electrical conducting uh, thing. You've got free moving electrons. That means you put in heat, the ions will start jiggling around really rapidly and, and you know, jiggling them more. And the little ions are also going to start jiggling and jiggling and then move from an area of high movement uh, to an area of low movement. So it's kind of like concentration. So uh, if you put heat here, it's going to start jiggling, jiggling, jiggling here, and then the, the, the thing is going to resonate or conduct itself onto the other particles as it spreads its kinetic energy. As the ions here spreads its energy from an area of high energy to an area of lower energy, and you get all this heat being conducted. Wonderful. All right. This sliding rows and layers of positive ions means that if you hammer it, so here I've got a diagram of this. If I hammer it, pop, just that top layer, it's going to slide past each other. Remember, the metallic bonds are strong, but they're not rigid. So there you go. That's the gist of metals. Now let's talk about alloying. Well, if you see that the structure of these met metallic elements, they're not rigid enough. And that's not so cool, because if you like buy a gold ring and it's made of pure gold, what's gonna happen is that you can bend the ring and the ring's not gonna fit in your fingers anymore, right? Or if you make a bridge out of pure iron and you drive a big old truck into it, like lots of trucks go over it, the, the bridge is gonna sag as the metal uh, metal frame of the bridge starts, uh, iron frame of the bridge starts warping and bending. All right? So we alloy the metals. What is an alloy? Well, alloys are basically metals, a base metal that is mixed with an impurity of some sort, whether the impurity is an element or other metal elements, all right? Uh, like met elements like carbon and some, some sort of stuff like that. And the reason is why we uh, make alloys is to strengthen the structure. And also, it lowers the melting point of, because it's a mixture. When you lower the melting point, it means there's less energy that's needed to form alloy shapes. All right? Now, the base, but the thing is that making alloy depends on what you want to do with it. It's really hard to predict the properties of alloys. And so, People make alloys is because they want to strengthen it, uh, they want to shape it, they also want the metal pieces to last longer. So the alloy pieces, they want it to last longer. And so they'll do that, like coins, you know, instead of making silver, they, make, they mix it up with a bit of nickel and stuff like that, and, and it makes the silver coins um, stronger and last longer. Uh, cutleries. We make stainless steel cutleries, which is made of iron and carbon and chromium and stuff like that. And it's to make it so that it does not rust. And uh, jet engines and super sport cars have aluminum alloys because you need aluminum and another metal with high melting points 
let's say, uh, I think nickel or something, or no, wait, I, I kind of forgot. You know, another type of aluminum to just to make it lighter and able to withstand high temperatures. And so, why is our alloy stronger? Well, let's look at it. Here again, another diagram of an alloy, and uh, what here got alloy is, is not in the same shape as the other base metal. So the yellow spheres here are the base metal, and I put an impurity in there. So if I knock on the first layer, what's going to happen is that this two uh, metallic uh, ions here is going to whack into the alloy. It's not going to slide past each other because it's big and it's these things are holding the, uh, the, the structure of this uh, is holding or preventing the uh, layers of our, uh, positive base metal ions from sliding past each other.